Good afternoon. Can people hear me? Yes. Hi. So, um, it's not quite one, but you're all here and we're ready to rock and roll, so we're just going to get going. A reminder to turn off your um, notifications on your phone and other distracting devices, if you would, please. And um, welcome to the Norman Williams Library. And one of our programs, actually one of two today. We have another author event this afternoon at 6. Uh, Celia Riker will talk about a historical novel that she wrote about her well, based on her grandmother's uh, pretty hard scrabble life. But right now we're here for pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought at the library? Uh, Woodstock was incredibly fortunate uh, when the school district decided to hire Joyce U. Babbitt last year to be the librarian at the elementary school and um, Prosper Valley School. Uh, she has amazing energy and she's willing to spend her time here at the library while she's on vacation to talk to grown-ups about pickleball and on Thursday, if we don't have a blizzard and a foot of snow, she's going to be talking to middle grade readers on the um, Golden Dome Book Awards. DCF on yeah. <laughs> the Vermont Golden Dome Book Awards, yeah. which is to be a DCF yep. those of you who have been doing this as long as I have. Um, and uh, so in addition to being an incredibly well-recognized elementary educator, Joyce is a competitive athlete and she's a coach in swimming and volleyball. But she was introduced to pickleball by friends in 2020, which is not all that long ago, and she wholeheartedly, I have to say, from all I've read, embraced the game. She became certified with the International Federation of Players and she trained as a professional instructor and um, she just loves to share her passion for the game. I Without do. Without further ado, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Some fun facts about myself. Uh, just yesterday, I applied to be Zane Navratel's intern. He uh, does a podcast, and he had re requested for someone to be a researcher. And I said, I'd love to be a researcher. So for many of you know who Zane Navratel is, he's third in the nation. He just reached out to me and I'm like, wow, you know, this is pretty exciting for me. Uh, I competed in the 1984 Junior Olympics in synchronized swimming. So in 1984, that was a new and up and coming sport. I had left competitive swimming. My parents wanted me to go into that world, which I did love. Uh, but I really liked the team aspect of synchronized swimming. I love all forms of competition. So when you say, ready, set, go, and you say, there, I'm ready to run with you. Um, I have a podcast with our schools. It's called Ready, Read, Review, kind of the same concept, but I put a microphone in front of children's um, uh, faces and get them to talk about books. And um, I'm really into health, wellness, fitness, and helping people laugh and enjoy their lives. So today I hope to share a few things with you. And I, I uh, am a visual learner, and I hope that this will work. So let's see if it works. Um, this is prior to the pandemic. I was coaching a travel team in Maine known as the Maine Juniors uh, U16 Silver Team. Um, in college, I was not able to compete at Cal State University Long Beach because everyone was amazing. They went on to the Olympics. This, uh, they never lost. It was 38-0 NCAA champions. They built a facility. It was amazing. Uh, prior to knowing that I would never make the college team in high school, I was told you'd be a great defense defense specialist. So that means back row and you serve. So anytime you see me back there serving, that's my specialty. I just want to be really good at serving. Uh, so when I coached this team, I really loved helping people understand basic foundations of body mechanics, drilling, how to understand how to pass, set, serve. So a lot of the things transferred over. Prior to this, um, I was coaching swimming too. And uh, so my background really is working with people. I love people. Um, so 
this summer, uh, I, I was living in Maine. I contact Bill Corson. I said, hi, I'm moving. I just need to make sure there's pickleball here. That was eight months ago. And I'm glad I've arrived to a place where people do love pickleball. And they actually want instruction. So I was very fortunate to have the coaching through Jody Elliott with the um, Engage Sports. Uh, they have uh, had, they had, they are no longer, as far as I know, um, continuing this certification because it's international. And so when we would have class after we went to the Engage Camp, it would be like a three hour Zoom meeting uh, testing your knowledge. And what was I, just amazing were, was the fact that people were from all parts of the world, not just here in the United States, that wanted to expand their knowledge in pickleball. Uh, so. Uh, what is your experience with pickleball? I'd like us to turn and talk for just a minute to a person you don't know. And just, just one minute like this, hi, I'm Joyce. Tell me your experience in pickleball. Ready, set, go. Turn to a person you don't, don't know. Hi, I'm Carrie. Hi, Carrie. I just started playing in October, end of October when I retired. Oh, wonderful. Do you love it? I do love it. Yeah. I just love it. But I have a lot to learn still. Good. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Yes. In five, four, three, two, and one. And in schools, we go like this. Way to turn and talk, get to know someone. Uh, continue to carry that conversation after this talk. That's why pickleball is awesome. The people are awesome. Uh, I, I think I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. I, I wanted to share uh, the fact that what came to be for me was uh, my first experience was, eh, it was okay. Then when the pandemic hit and there was nothing, I, I had to stop coaching, there was nothing. I, my friend's like, let's just get outside. I'm like, okay, let's go on walks. We'd go on walks, that was great. But then when we met here at Little Falls in Gorham, Maine, it became the hub for socialization, uh, opportunity to just vent, to be able to play hours and hours and just not worry about what was happening in the world. This is the last day I was in Maine. I, was, I had the U-Haul packed and my friend saying, you can play a couple hours, you just get, get it packed and just come down to the courts. And it is a community. It is a community in the sense that you get to um, know people, you get to um, exercise. It's just a wonderful, I, you know what I'm talking about. And, and you're willing to get up really early you're willing to put in the hours because you're having so much fun, right? So these are um, people that I met on the court and we've become very good friends. It, it's just been uh, incredible. Um, a part of this experience was then to compete. I, I love competition, as you know. Um, I also like the feeling of pressure, like, <gasps> so this, this moment, I'm in a scramble. This is in um, Brunswick. And what I loved about this competition was it was um, scramble the ages. Just like everybody, you, we had a 16-year-old, we had a 90-year-old, and we were all playing, and we're having a great time. And Joe here is my mixed partner, and he's just feeling like he didn't do as well as he could possibly. So we're just making fun of Joe. Um, I am into tournaments. Uh, I am a 3.5 player uh, on, on most days. Some days I'm a 3.7. Uh, you know, in order to get to 4.0, I have to work on my third shot drop, as we all need to work on, right? Uh, but in my experience, I uh, just love this competition. Uh, my next competition that I'm training for is the Senior Nationals in July, which is in Pittsburgh. And all of you can compete because if you're over 50, we can be a part of this fun. And it is great fun. All right. So uh, I want to now get to book resources. There's a lot of books. So this is the book that I am going to mainly talk about. Um, I found this book through a podcast, and I'll explain which podcast, and I'll go through several different 
pages so that you can have the experience of what Mike Brennan says. But feel free to look through this copy. Um, this is um, my coach and instructor, Brett Knoll, and Brett gives you lots of drills. He's, he's basically really upfront. He says, 15 minutes of drilling is like three hours of play, put in the time. So that's Brett Knoll. And this book is fantastic if you're a person who wants um, to set goals, to do drills, to plan it out, to think about tournaments. The one thing that I haven't done, but um, I am hoping to do, is videotape a game and do analysis on all of the mistakes I make, and then be able to say, oh, oh, there's the winners, there's the errors, this is what I need to work on. So there's a lot of great tools. This is a great tool. It's $19, and you can get it on Amazon. So here are some resources that you can certainly tap into. I think many of you know about the Dink. Uh, the Dink is actually sponsored by the Plunge, and the Plunge is actually an ice bath company. So they're promoting their product, um, and you'll see that as you scroll down through the newsletter. It comes out about once a week. Um, Pickleball Fire podcast is one that I really like. Lynn Sherry does a great job. She's been doing it over two years. She also has a magazine. Uh, and is a former volleyball player from Southern California, like myself. Uh, unfortunately, she hasn't been producing many new episodes, but every past episode has someone dynamic and powerful and interesting, and really talking about a variety of things regarding pickleball. This is new. This is Pickle Pod, the voice of pickleball. Uh, they're now getting some... Um, uh, sponsors, Zane Navratel was last on, and as I mentioned, he was saying that we're hiring an intern if there's anyone who's interested in doing re research. It also goes into the business of pickleball and how it's exploding, so I, I highly recommend it, and I think you might find it interesting. Let's talk about YouTube. Most of you get your material from YouTube. It's a great source. There's so many people out there offering you ideas and suggestions. I find Joey incredibly funny. He is um, of the Pickleball Pirates. And how that started was they basically started videotaping um, their, their games. And then he just started narrating, and it's just so much fun. And he puts out content, content daily. Zane Navratel, who, as you can sense, I really like and respect, um, his background is in accounting, so he really breaks it down with numbers, and he breaks it down with complexity. He doesn't just give you, you have to move up to the kitchen. He explains the however. Uh, he's really good at breaking it down. This is new. This is the fifth shot media. Now we're learning about the daily and weekly drama that happens on the PPA and the MLP. And they break it down with what are those professionals doing and all the bad behavior that they are executing and how we need to watch out for these people. It is hilarious. So the content is about six minutes. Um, or six to 10 minutes, but it's fabulous because then you're updated because you can't watch all of the professional pickleball. Um, so Mike Brennan writes this book called The Joy of Pickleball, and yes, the first part of it tends to be a little bit talky, a little bit too much on um, who I am, where I'm coming from, and, and just trying to give you a little bit of his philosophy. So it's a little bit on the light side of reading, for sure. Uh, I want to just go into what I felt was really helpful for me as a player. This is on page 86. Strive to improve is an important aspect of sports, but beware of becoming so driven that the joy of playing is lost. OK, you know what I'm talking about. You get up, you think about it, you want to play all the time. And then when you're not playing as well, you're miserable. And so he addresses that. He addresses that moment where you're not feeling like you're in the zone. You feel like physically and mentally you're not doing well. And he also um, gives you the sense that you know we, we are aging. And so we have to really take care of ourselves, knowing that we may have some limitations, too, as well. This is on page 83. 
Um, it encourages, he's talking about pickleball, of course. It encourages you to improve your fitness, learn new techniques, and employ strategies to outwit your opponents. It's a puzzle you never finish, but that's what keeps you coming back, determined to play your best, get the most of every game, every day. And then he continues to talk about the good life, which I really appreciate. Pickleball is an opportunity to hone your social skills, develop a positive attitude, and savor every single day. Now, many of you may have had some experiences with some physical ailments in your life. I certainly have. I had an injury where I blew out uh, my Achilles tendon, and I was out for a year, and I never thought I'd ever play any sports again because of that injury. Um, I also have some medical conditions. I have leukopenia, and so I have you know white, low white blood count um, uh, numbers. So I have to be aware of all of the health conditions that I have to you know, eat well and sleep well and all of the things that many of you may have experienced too as well. So I really like how he keeps it in perspective. Uh, as I continue, he keeps that language, he keeps that mindset. Um, so enjoy the process, face challenges with optimism, humility, and courage. Treasure the little victories, savor the progress you are making. And that is hard to do when we are our toughest critic. We know the shot that we missed. We know that we didn't win the game. We might have disappointed our partner or whatever it may be. But if you can walk off the court savoring the fact that, hey, I did pretty good on that dink, you know, just find some little moment on the court where you can say, I did pretty good. Um, the book has, excuse me, an index. The index also provides video. So um, if you get the ebook version, you can just click on the link, but just go to mikebrennan.com. Uh, and you'll find that he has a lot more than these eight videos. He does a great job breaking, breaking it down, and they're on the short side. And again, I think he does um, justice with all of these aspects of the game, from dinking, the third shot drop, the reset, ground, ground strokes, the volley, and the lob. Um, I really like how he talks about footwork. Um, uh, I always look for good footwork in my partners, uh, that they're moving their feet, that they're not tangling their feet. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of us who have coaching background will often find that that's an important part of pickleball. So I just wanted to ask you three questions because the book has the three purposes. He's basically say, saying play better, play healthier, and play happier. So here's, here are a couple of things that I got from the book. Uh, play with purpose. Don't go in there going, I'm going to win today. I'm going to win today. I'm going to win today. It's actually different. You're, you're hoping to play better by setting one goal for that game. So I know it's hard to do, but uh, take an opportunity to tell your partner. So I told Scott, I'm working on, and often they're like, Okay, whatever, right? So for me, it could be a hard-driven serve, or I'm going to work on my dink, or I'm going to work on more control or slow it down. Whatever it is, think of one thing. And then at the end of the game, think about uh, just checking in with your partner. Your partner actually might have noticed or not, but it's always nice to have feedback and have that connection with your partner in terms of your playing with purpose. And they, of course, should do the same. I'm working on this. So that if they continually mess up on the thing they're working on, there's forgiveness and an understanding that so-and-so is working on their dink game. So play better. Um, are you playing healthier? So cross-train. I know you have all heard this. So I'm here to encourage you to keep that going. Cardio, be on. If you get your Fitbit or you get some device, you'll notice that in pickleball, not always is your heart rate up. So you might need extra, whether it's running or whether it's swimming or finding some other way to get your cardio as well as your strength. Flexibility, I think many of you know about warming up, making sure that you come to the court nice and warm. Um, your nutrition, your sleep, injury prevention. There's so many different things to the game to, to play um, with good health. The happier part, I think, is the neat part of the book for me because a lot of the books that we read are talking about the first two. 
but uh, coping with failure. If you're a competitive person, be a competitive person and know that you know, you're, you're not always going to play your best. Today, you might be a 3.0 player. Tomorrow, you might be a 5, right? But not all days are going to be like that. To be, play consistently is what we aim to do. But play with gratitude is really important, that you're on the court. You're thankful that you are healthy, that you have arrived, that you have access to facilities, that you have good people that you're playing with. And, and just really keep in mind that this is your moment to enjoy your time on the court. Forget all the other things that are stressing you out. It's, it's the best day. It's the best moment. You've just arrived. So for those of you who are looking for tournaments, this is interesting. Things are evolving and changing as a result of DERPA. DERPA is really interesting for me because it's an algorithm to figuring out how you're doing on a daily or weekly basis. So on Tuesday afternoon, I'm going to find out how I'm doing based on my tournament play. Um, there are also, you can find partners based on your location. You can also find that there is an upcoming, this is Green Mountain Community Fitness in, in Barrie, and they're doing a shootout this Friday. So if you go to uh, DERPA, you can see that that's there. And they're going to do four or five shootouts, meaning that they'll pair you. It's a scramble. And it will then give DERPA the update how you're doing. Now you're like, why is this important? Why do I care? Well, I'm going to tell you why. So we know that there are many tournaments. This has been the traditional way to look for tournaments. This is pickleballtournaments.com. And you can see PPA, that is the professional, right? Professional Pickleball Association. So they're really looking for top-notch players here, but there's also in there some other type of pickleball play around the world. So you can certainly find it there. Uh, this is really where many of us would have found it. This is not, this is pickleball brackets. And so you can see tournaments and leagues and clubs. So this is how I would find something, but now it's DERPA is where things are. I want to highly encourage you to go to camp. Yes, there's adult camps, and some of you are like, I'm too old for that. I don't need to do that. Why don't why? Okay, so if you ever went to a great camp, this is a great camp. So if you went to band camp or you went to something amazing when you were in high school, it's kind of like this experience. So behind me are the three pros. Kevin Beeson, this is Brett Knoll, and uh, I think this is Len. Forgot Len's last name, but all three are professional players, and they're super supportive, and they help you with your game. This is Owl, Owl's, head, Owl's Nest in New Hampshire, and the facilities are amazing, and the coaching is amazing, and they're going to be completely honest with you, and they're going to give you notes on what to work on. And, and, and what I like about it is it's all drills all drills, all 16 hours drills. Do you ever play a game if you decide that you want to stay and play games? But they, they make you work on those drills. So this is Engage Pickleball Academy. And um, it's three days, 16 hours. They give you a free paddle. There's different levels. There's different locations. You can look this up. You can find me at the Woodstock Athletic Club doing private, semi-privates, and groups. Right now, uh, most of my clients are people who are coming from out. They, they don't live here in Woodstock. They, they just rolled in from Massachusetts. They're on vacation. They heard about this thing, and they want to learn. And that, that's most of my clients right now. So what's very interesting right now is you know pickleball is just, it's blowing up. This is the Major League Pickleball. There are two leagues, the Premier and the Challenger, and this is what's making press. It's only been around since 2021, but you know a lot of people are investing into the Major uh, League Pickleball. Now, most of the kids are 16. The oldest is probably, uh, I think, 40. So uh, people are, are watching, they're noticing, and we're also noticing that things are popping up like the world's longest pickleball marathon. Now, I thought I had created it, but apparently this is happening in Canada. So this is me and my friends. So in 2021, I said, hey, let's go to three venues all day. Let's do this. Let's... So it was 
Sue Ann, Louise, myself, and then Amy would come on one venue, and then we'd add a, another person, Deb, on another venue, and Scott in another venue. So what I mean by this is, is that you set up a whole day of play, but in three different venues. You're in a car with your friends eating. So you pack, you do meal prep on Friday, so you have everything. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? But it's so much fun. OK, so just know that we're planning this, too, for 2023. So, uh, so the whole idea is you love pickleball so much, by the end of the day, your feet hurt, and you're like, this is crazy. So I asked Lauren when I moved into town, I said, Lauren, would you be a part of my pickleball marathon? She didn't actually know what I was talking about. Now you do. And, um, and I think what's really bonding about the experience is, is that by the end of the day, you're like, OK, I, I don't need any more pickleball because I've just played like six hours of it. And it's just it's something that I, I think is great for people who are into uh, the game. So now what we know is that this is starting in April. OK, seniors get excited. So we now know that pickleball is big, but it's now this, National Pickleball League rec style, open rec. OK, so what we do is th this is the idea. OK, now how it's going to go, we don't know for sure. But it's pretty much set, set up like the Major League Pickleball. Everything is through DERPA. So you're going to get a rating, and then you're going to be on an open rec league. And then there's going to be like two like brackets or two like different leagues, and they come together, and there's cash. And this is for seniors, because this is now age leveled. It is not, uh, you know, you're playing against a 16-year-old. So this is coming up in, in April. What else is coming up is um, lots of other uh, great venues and experiences. I just mentioned to a couple of you before you arrived, there will be uh, a virtual, um, what's it called? It's kind of like a survivor type of scenario where you have, they say, eight pickleball professionals who want to go pro living in a house. <laughs> So they're, gonna, they're going to feature the drama that occurs among pickleball players who want to go pro. And the, the pros that move on will then. So this is actually going to happen in a couple months. It's in development. Uh, there's also documentaries about people from different countries who want to uh, go pro. So uh, I just recently read that this uh, Swedish couple are documenting how they're w making their way here to the United States to be on the um, national pickleball, uh, the major leagues pickleball uh, on one of the teams. So lots is happening in regards. I just want to conclude and then answer questions. Um, if you are a person who is interested in paddles and testing out engaged paddles specifically, I am sponsored by them, um, and if you do happen to buy anything, it's 20 Babbitt, and you get 20% off. In that basket, I am now raffling off two items from Engage. Thanks to them, they've given me a hat, and the winner is Alan Fine. Come on up. Take a hat or a towel. Um, and Scott Ward. Take a towel or a hat, either one. And Thank you so much for being here. I'd like to make sure I answer any questions as best as I can. I'll just be up front. I'm learning. I'm, I'm a student of the game. I'm, I'm definitely uh, finding there's so much um, to learn about the game. Questions, comments, thoughts. <laughs> I am at Reading Elementary, Woodstock Elementary, and the Prosper Valley. How about pickle? pickleball? In pickleball, I'm at the Woodstock Athletic Club. So in May, I am hoping to do more drills with people in groups of uh, even numbers, whether it be 2, 6, 8, uh, 12. Especially with the weather improving, I'm hoping that people are open to the drilling concept. Um, that uh, we work on one aspect of our game for 10, 15 minutes and then do another drill, a uh, total of four to six drills, and then um, go use it in your gameplay. Thank you. I love partnerships. I love, 
Uh, I do play singles. Um, I, I, it's a different it's a different type of game, but partners is really where it's at because you can communicate clearly with your partner because you see what's happening. Uh, but your partner may not. And if there's a trusted relationship, you can be honest and say, hey, you did a footfall, and they won't like get mad at you. But depends on your partner, right? <laughs> depends on your partner. So uh, I think uh, with partnerships, once you get to know people and you feel like you're comfortable in, in the communication. So I have arrived on, uh, on scene to new locations where I've been told I'm too loud. In general, I'm mic'd up, I'm very quiet. So one day I was playing with somebody and he was, he was kind of annoyed because I was left-handed. He didn't realize I was taking the middle because I could take the middle. <laughs> And, uh, and he, he just was not very happy with me. And then I, I said to him, uh, excuse me, I come from a volleyball background where every, everything is called, everything is communicated. And so I've learned to have to turn that off a bit more. I'm more conscientious of that. Uh, the balancing of what should be said and what not, I'm still learning that. Okay, so Bill, I'm going to be up front with you. Jody is right. <laughs> Jody is right with the backhand, okay? You got to take on. Um, so uh, I do understand what you're saying too because there is differences. For example, there is the idea that when you're holding your paddle, it's neutral for many people. They'll hold it like this. But if you've been coached to have it more dominant towards your backhand, then we're getting more specific. Is it for a lefty? Is it at three o'clock or is it at one o'clock or is it at two o'clock, right? So Zane Navratil, who you know I think is awesome, will tell you it depends. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it depends on a couple of factors, um, your, your opponents, right? And, and so if they know that your weak side is your backhand or your forehand, then that, I think that plays into a part. Um, I basically am a rule follower. I am a teacher follower. And when Jody tells me that's how I'm going to do it, Bill, I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> She's talking about the volley, Bill. She's talking about the volley. I know what video you're talking about. That's a recent one that she just did. And she is telling you this for the volley. But for the dink, it is low, low to high. So we can debate this on the court tomorrow morning at 6.30. <laughs> Any other questions? It's so social. It's so social. Oh, gosh. And I love the fact that I can play with someone who's 80. Then I can play with someone who's 16. I can play with my entire family. I can um, put out a bunch of random paddles, and, and children will come out and play. It's just so much fun. It's like it really is being a kid and saying, Scott, can you play today? <laughs> And that's what's so great. Now, is that the case in basketball? Is that the case in swimming? Is that the case in other sports? No. Uh, I think the access to pickleball is so available to just anyone. Um, learning the game, easy from the start to a large degree. Mastery, mastering it, very, very hard. But um, that that is... Um, I think COVID also brought on um, more and more people because we have the social distancing naturally. So that brought on the idea that we were, we were safe, that we could be outside, that we could play with each other. Uh, so that was one of the big factors for me. So let me tell you, the new developments are occurring right now. There's a derpo ball. They're looking at speed. They're not actually looking at sound. They just want balls to get faster, and they want them. <laughs> uh, but we are aware of the noise complaints that are coming um, loud and clear.
from other community members for sure. Uh, but businesses are actually looking at speed and durability, um, especially in cold weather. So what's interesting is, is the development on the business side of pickleball has blown up. Um, one of the reasons why Engage is interested in common people like me, common players, is that there were 523 paddles that were designed and developed within this past year. So that's a lot of paddles that were also approved by the, the, you know, the organization, the USA Pickleball. And this is the case for also new balls that are coming out too as well. So a lot of new products are coming out. So for me, I, I actually am more uh, on the beginner end. I am not necessarily uh, coaching people at, at 3.7. Most of my clients are like I said, they come into town, they want to at least understand the basics, they want to work on their, their fitness, actually. They're coming to the game because they want the social aspect and they want fitness in their life. And they know that they could play this in their community, whether it's in Connecticut or Massachusetts or wherever they're returning back to. So um, I'm at the Woodstock Athletic Club. And as I know, Bill also does lessons too. Uh, and so. Are there any beginner, like beginner groups that you can just kind of sign up for beginner groups? So this is interesting. This is interesting. Uh, I think right now what we're noticing is, is that um, there is a demand in instructors. And in terms of locations that are accepting, uh, I have communicated to different organizations. And right now, I think people are, are they're, they're open to it, but we're not in summer mode and there's not a lot of outdoor facilities right now that are available. So to answer your question, I think you're gonna see it soon. I think you're gonna see more and more um, instruction occurring in the area. You don't have anything now? Uh, um, right now it would be private lessons and then bringing your uh, four four or two or three, whoever clients that you're looking, just call the club and they'll, they'll make an available spot. But right now it's pretty crowded with our two courts and competing with tennis. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to recommend this book again, especially that chapter. And I'm going to open it to you because he actually wants you to define what your fun is. Uh, and is it serious fun or do you find competitive that competitive aspect of your life fun or is it more competitive like he actually defines so i was just going to hand the book to you chapter seven and, and think about what what part of the game makes you happy for me it's the dinking and the the back and forth volley it's the long volleys it's the hand battles that go back and forth like 20 times and i'm like yes <laughs> I don't actually win a lot of those, but I just get excited about the fact. I think everybody wants to win and play their best. Yes. When you're playing with someone who gets really cranky and annoyed. Yes, 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 yes. And I have to say, I am a creative person who wants to write a sitcom about these type of people. Because <laughs> at the moment, it's so annoying and irritating. But if you step back, it's actually quite comical. Uh, because the tension that they create on the court actually makes a great comedy, a sitcom. I could watch that from a distance. Not up close, though. Not up close. Yeah. Anything else? I love these conversations. Feel free to share a story. Yes. I, I'm not from around here. I play over at the CCB in Lebanon. Yes. And, um, for those people that are newer, there, there are beginner times that mm -hmm. beginner Great. Anything else? I love how you're sharing information. So there's different locations. Um, I haven't seen more of the like open instruction for beginners in the area yet, but there is at CCBA also on Thursdays okay. at nine. Thursdays at nine. Yeah. Okay, you great. Have to, you have to sign up for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, watching a game of really good people. Uh -huh. is, that, is that helpful? As far Absolutely. As so uh, I'm obsessed, as you know. So I watch Anna Bright 
Anna Bright is the rising star. She is like hand battle, left and right and left and right. And then, and then there's exuberant cheering, excessive to certain degrees. Certain people are like, mm, she's a little too much. She's like, yeah. <laughs> so all of this is happening right now in Arizona. Arizona. So the PPA is occurring right now. You could go home and watch 24 hours of pickleball, which you don't have time because you are playing it. So the fifth media shot, that's the, the thing I was telling you. Subscribe to it, and they'll give you a brief overview of what happened that day. I think for me, what I'm most interested in, and I hope that you're interested, is training. Uh, so, like, think back when you were younger and you were trained. Like, I know you were all, like, former athletes of something, right? And he's like, I'm going to work towards that. So I'm, I'm the person who will be like, yes, I'm excited for you. So uh, if there is a goal in mind and that you, you want that personalization for an upcoming event, I'm that type of person who's going to help you through that process if you want that help. Um, I think it's always good to reach for a goal and know what you're training for. Um, and a lot of times when the event occurs for me, I'm like, eh, it's okay, I'm, I'm going to compete. But it was the training for me. Not every person is like this. Uh, but for me, it's the fact that I'm like, I'm training, I'm going. <laughs> right? So maybe not for you, but that's definitely how I roll. Um, so I would love to share more with you. I will stay here. And if you want to talk about the National Senior Games and how you're going to get involved, I, I would love to help train you. Make sure you got a good solid partner. Or if you want to compete in singles, or if you just have any questions, I'll stand right here for you. OK? Have a great day. And keep playing. Keep playing. Thank you.